I hope you got your Bible because I'm gonna read it straight out of the Word. I got every scripture written down in my Bible, in my in my notebook. Um, but I will read it directly out of the Word because I might have a misprint, miss error that from me writing. I might have rewrote a, a word twice or missed a line, and I don't want to do that. Um, real quick, I'm gonna recap over some over some things and I want to touch one scripture first and I want you to open your Bibles up to to Romans chapter 10 17 and and this is the reason why I'm gonna say it Romans chapter 10 verse 17 and I know we hear a lot of things pastor says and we hear the same scriptures over and over and over and over and over and over and over because that's for a reason and this is the reason so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God Amen. right Amen. so we hear the same scripture several times every week over and over and over so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God Romans chapter 10 verse 17 Okay, so now I'm going to touch on some of those scriptures that brother talked that are uh, that brother had brings out in the word. Okay, so let's go to them. Proverbs 25 2. If you want to turn to them, you can. Proverbs 25 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search them out or search out a matter. Are we all here, kings? Amen. I am a king of the of the Most High. Guarantee it. I am a child of God. Yeah. Okay? So, if he's going to conceal it, and the glory of God is what? It's the face. Guess what? I want to be a king to search out a matter because I want to be revealed unto me. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secrets. If you want to open it up to it, do you want me to? You want me to slow down? Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. I'll say it again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But, it says, but the things which are revealed belong to who? Uh, Us. Hallelujah. Right? Yes. Yeah. The secret things belong to God, but what is revealed belongs to us. Hold up. That sounds familiar. Turn your Bibles to, if you need to, turn your Bibles to. It's just coming back to my memory, so I'm going to go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for it. I'm going to go to Psalms 91. Go to Psalms 91. Real quick. Psalms 91. Verse 1. He who dwelleth in the what? Secret place. What it? Most high. Guess what? Deuteronomy 29, 29. There it is. Here it is again. The secret things belong to God. You want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High? Yeah. The secret things belong to God. I do. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So, which one? Oh, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Now, we know right there, Things need to be revealed to us. God wants to reveal things to us. Okay? And I'm going to show you things that you haven't heard. Another one. I'm going to bring you to John chapter 5. And I'm, I'm, I'm showing, I'm bringing these up to you so that you know where they're at in the Word of God. So that when people come to us to be able... 
you know, we just say, okay, it says in the Bible that, you know, the, the Old Covenant, you know, Jesus said the Old Covenant is written about us, about me, you know, oh, I'm sorry, it, the Old Covenant is written about me, you know, well, where does it say it's written about him at? Well, John chapter 5, okay, so John chapter 5, he says that this Old Covenant is written about me. He says, you believe Moses, but Moses says, Moses writes about me. Right. It says that in John chapter 5. Right. So now we know. Let's get that in our memory break so we have it. So we know where it's at. Now y'all know. Let's start this message. Okay? That's just things pastor brings to us every week. So we have it in us. In us. Open your Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And this is where it got started. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Y'all ready? Yeah. And David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people and were with him from Bala of Judah to bring up from thence the ark, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubim and my journey begins when I said that who dwelleth between the cherubims the Lord stopped me instantly and he said who dwelleth between the cherubims and that was the question and it led to 20 pages back and front Let's start. Genesis chapter 3, verse 25. Turn to it. Y'all going to answer your own? Y'all going to answer the questions? Yourself, because y'all going to know them. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 24. Genesis 3, 24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which he turned every which way to keep the way of the light of the keep the way of the tree of life. Oh my Lord. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east gate, the flaming sword? The Garden of Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword? We know there's two angels on the side of a tree. Who is the tree? Who is the tree of life? Jesus Christ. We know that, right? So I got to looking. The flaming sword. What is the flaming sword? What is a flame? It's fire. What is the sword? Word. It's the word. So you're telling me flaming is fire, so another question come up. What is fire? Anybody can tell me what fire is? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. For the Lord God is a consuming fire. Amen. Is it not? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. Verse 29. Hebrews 12, verse 29. Backs up. Deuteronomy 4. God is a consuming fire. Amen. Exodus 3. Two. Let's go to that one. I don't know if I got... It says, uh, Exodus 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him as a flame of fire. Well, who is that angel of the Lord? If you read on down a little further, who is it? It's God that appeared to Moses out of a burning bush. Amen. Is it not? Yes. Yeah. Exodus 19, 18. In Mount Sinai, David, remember... And Mount Sinai was altogether a smoke and became the Lord, descended upon it in fire. I'll give you another one. Exodus 24, 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire. 
Well, wait a minute. Let's go back to Exodus first, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 3. So he drove out the man and he placed. Well, I took the word placed and I looked at it in the Hebrew Strongs. And the word placed in the Hebrew Strongs, the Strongs number is 7931. It means to dwell. It means to dwell. So he dwells. At the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubims in a flaming fire. No fire. Fire. God. So now we got a flaming fire who is God in a sword. So we got God's word that went about the tree of life. in the midst. We have two cherubims on each side. So we got two cherubims and we have God's word, the fire that went around the tree of life. And who is the tree of life? Jesus Christ. Understand? That was something that the Lord had showed me. To keep. The word keep is to card. To guard the way of the tree of life and that was Jesus so Jesus is the one that dwelleth between the cherubim and the word of God is what went about him to keep guard of him let's turn our Bibles let's go to um, I got uh, now we see now we see who God is. We have a better understanding of Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. But that's not all. God placed a flaming sword that turned every which way to guard the tree of life. And we already went back to Genesis chapter 3. But wait, <clears throat> let's not lose track. The cherubims on each side of the tree of life, who is Jesus? Let's see if he is the one that dwelleth between the cherubims. Turn your Bibles to John 20, verse 11. John what? John 20, chapter 20, verse 11. Rather. Y'all ready? But Mary stood without at the tomb. I was just a sepulchre, however you would pronounce that, weeping. And as she witch, as she wept, she stooped, stooped down and looked into the tomb, and seeth two angels in white, seating the one at the head and the other at the foot, where the body of Jesus had laid. So Jesus is the one. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18, verse 17. We're just proving who Jesus Christ is. Okay? If he is the one that's seated between the cherubims. It's going to get a lot. It's going to kick off. Really kick off. <clears throat> Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. Now we're going to read. Genesis chapter 18, we're going to start at 17. And when the y'all ready? And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the things which I do? That's pretty crazy how he says that. Am I going to hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, 
in all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. That brings us back to Deuteronomy 29. 29, the secret things of God. But what is revealed belongs to us. So God reveals something to Abraham. For I know him. Does God know you? That he will command his children in his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because they, their sin is very grievous, I will go there now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and it is not, I will know. Now, the secret place that God hides from people that don't know him we go and we dwell in the secret place in, 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 in uh, Psalms 91 God begins to reveal things to us that, we, that he wants us to know but if we don't get there he, we can't if we don't get in his word we're not going to know so as long as we abide in him remain in him and stay in him guess what things begin to open and up open and up open up and for the last I don't know how long now God has just been showing me and showing me and I've been in that secret place and I was like my God all I can do is just pour it out on my mom pour it out on my mom it's just been amazing what he's been doing we're going to keep on reading because who dwelleth between the cherubims? We don't want to get pat. We don't want to lose that because that's what we're looking for. Who dwelleth between the cherubims? So we've seen the fire of God and who is God? God is fire. We see the tree of life who is Jesus and who dwelleth between the cherubims. So we're looking at several different pictures right here that God is bringing us on a journey with. Okay? I ain't losing y'all, right? <laughs> now listen. I'm going to back up. I'm going to go to, we, we on this right here, but let's back up to, let's back up to Genesis 17. And when Abraham was 90 years old, or 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and thou perfect. And I will make a covenant between me and thee. So there's a covenant that's going to be made between the two. All right? And that's the nations that's going to come out of him. And the reason why I'm telling you that, because that's going to bring us down further into the message of what's going to come out. Okay? That's why I'm bringing you here. Go back. Now we're going to go to 18 verse 1. Okay? Remember that covenant. That covenant is just going to be later on. Um, Genesis 18. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory, if that's right. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and he looked and lo, three men, three men stood by him. And when he had saw them, he ran to meet them. There was three men that is there meeting with him. Okay? Go back to go back to Genesis eighteen twenty two. So the secret place that God reveals to to Abraham is he going to hide what he's about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? Remember, there's three men there. One of them's God. Who are the other two? The other one's Jesus. And the other men turned their face from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. You understand that? Who dwelleth between the cherubim? Genesis chapter 3, we have the tree of life. Who is it? 
It's Jesus Christ. He places a cherubim on each side of the tree. And the flaming sword, what is the flame? What is flame? It's a fire. What is the sword? It's the word of God. It's the word of God that is on fire that goes about the tree of life. Him, we're in the cherubims on either side. Do you understand that? Yeah. So when Jesus Christ walks, it's fire. And the word of God goes about him. And the cherubims walk beside him. But that's not it. The Ark of the Covenant. It's not here right now. But the Ark of the Covenant. Which way does the Ark of the Covenant, the two cherubims on each side of the Ark, which way does it face? It faces the mercy seat. It faces, because when God sits on his throne, the cherubims face him. So you, so let's read a little, let's, let's read that again. So it says, and the men turned, and the men turned their faces from thence. So I took the word thence, I'll go to my Hebrew Strong's, and I look up the word. And the Strong's number is 3212. Well, guess what the name, well, guess what the, uh, it is. It says, away, hence, or him. So you telling me, when they walked, they turned their faces from him, and they left him and went to Sodom and Gomorrah? So you telling me when Jesus Christ walked, those angels stayed looking at him the whole time? No. But did they turn their face from him? They turned their face from him. From him, who him? Christ. Who dwelleth away from him? He is the one that dwelleth between the cherubim. So there's always two cherubims. There's always, when he walks, there's always cherubims on every, on either side. Second Samuel, I'll read it to you again. Second Samuel chapter 6. The ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth, that dwelleth between the cherubims. Who dwelleth between the cherubims? Jesus Christ. John 20, verse 11. When he died, there was cherubims on both sides. Genesis chapter 3, when the tree of life was there, he placed two cherubims on both sides. When Jesus Christ came up to Abraham, there was two cherubims on both sides. But that's not all. There's more. Where else? All right, I did that. Is it possible The two angels that were with Abraham, I'm sorry, the two angels that was with Jesus Christ when he died, one at the head and one at the feet, and Jesus Christ is the one that dwelleth between the cherubims, is it possible that it is the same two angels that were with him when he went and he met Abraham? And he is the one that dwelleth between the cherubims? Yeah. Is that possible? In Hebrews 13, verse 8, what does it say? Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Is it the same two angels? Yes, it is. And I'm going to prove it to you. Without a shadow of a doubt. I'll prove it to you without a shadow of a doubt. Remember when Lucifer, remember when Lucifer took Jesus up on the pentacle and he began to, or high mountain, and began to teach, or began to tempt Jesus? 
And he said, For it is written, He shall give his angels. Or he said, He says, If thou be the Son of God, to throw yourself down from this mountain, you know, yeah. he says, For it is written, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. You see, remember, Jesus Christ was veiled. He couldn't see what was behind that veil. So apparently the angels that was with Christ had to be veiled also. Right. He had to be looking. He was looking. If you are Christ, where are your cherubims? Where are they? Because he knew. He had to know. Well, let me ask you a question. He said, for it is written. How does Lucifer know that? And where is it written? Where is it written? Open your Bibles to Psalms 91, verse 11. Psalms 91, verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all the ways. That's when David said... 10,000 died to my left, and the Havi says it, 10,000 and 1,000, how many thousand to the left and the right? For shall not come not That's right, that he was sending his angels. Don't forget that, because it means something later on. God is going to send his angels charge over thee, thee, because because of something. Now, what kind of angel is Lucifer? How do you know that? Because he got it up. How do you know it? Where is it at? How do you know? Wait. Because because the cherubim is a high angel, right? Yeah. He is? Yeah. And, and, and he was a higher ranking angel. Yeah. Open your Bibles. Where? I got it written down. Where do I got it at? It's in Ezekiel. It's in Ezekiel. Hold on. I was uh, getting off of... Um, 37. Remember? Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it is um, 37. I wrote it down. Got Ezekiel 28, 14. I'm sorry, it was right there. My page was there. Open your Bibles. Ezekiel 28, 14. Ezekiel 28, 14. Thou art, God speaking, thou art the cherubim cherub that covereth and I have set thee so that waste upon the holy mountain of God that has walked up and down the stones of fire. And the reason why he was cast down because he covereth Christ. Lucifer, who is now Satan, is a cherub, an angel. He knows he lost his position. And that's why he knows the scriptures. And when he was looking at Christ, he was examining him, checking him, and could not find no fault in him. And he was looking for the cherubim. If thou be the Son of God, why don't I see any angels? Why don't I see the cherubims? Because I used to be the one that was on the side of him. I was there. I used to be there. But I don't see him. He can't be him. He wouldn't have killed him. That ain't all. Open your Bibles. To, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. Father. Oh. 
Now, what's crazy? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. Listen to this. For we are... For this is this is Paul talking, and he says, "For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry." What does that mean, husbandry? Hebrew Strong's Greek meaning. What does it mean? It means you are a land worker. You are a farmer in the house of God. You are God's building. Doesn't the Bible say? Which I'll get to it a little bit further. He don't dwell in temples that are made by human hands, but are made by His hands. You are the building. You are the temple of God. Ah, remember that. Let's go down to 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. He says it again. And the way he says it, the way he says it, and before he gets to it, he says, watch how who builds upon your foundation. He says, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, stubble will pass through the fire. Now listen to this. Fire. Pass through the fire. Pass. Hold on. Let's, let's, you know what? I'm going to back up to it. I'm going to read the whole thing. Let me start at 10. According to the grace which is given unto me, Paul says, as a wise master builder, I have laid... Paul's saying, I am a master builder. I am a wise master builder. I had laid the foundation in another building, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed. The word take heed means beware. Yeah. Be watchful. Yeah. Judge everything that comes to you. Not man. Don't judge man. Judge everything that you take in. Because if you take it in, it comes on your foundation. Be watchful. Beware of everything. For other foundations, for other foundation can no man lay than that is already laid. The foundation is laid and it's Jesus Christ and that is it. The death, burial, and the resurrection. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, listen to what he says. Now, if any man builds on the foundation of Jesus Christ, gold, money, silver, money, precious stones, money, wood, hay, stubbles, cars, house, this, that, and the other, every man's work shall be made manifested for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed it shall be revealed by fire what does that mean what is fire we already been through it what is fire God point and blink God is two things God is two things God is fire God is judgment so when I before when I stand before God what is it gonna be Am I going to be a flame on fire for him? Is my flame going to mingle into his? Or I'm going to be not on fire and he's going to burn me up with gold. Gold's going to burn. Silver's going to burn. Precious stones are going to burn. Wood, hay, and stubble's going to burn. But the word of God that's in me is going to mingle into him. Understand? Mm -hmm. Everything else is gone. Gold is gone. It means nothing. Sorry, I just had. I felt like I had to be thrown in there. I want to be on fire when he returns. Amen. I pray that y'all on fire. We're all on fire. I pray that I'm on fire. Lord, keep me where I'm at. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall be receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved because your foundation is Jesus Christ. 
yet so as by fire. Now here it is. Let's get away from that. That right there. Father, we thank you for that. That was a little extra. I want to be on fire. And then when I stand before the fire who is God, I want my flame to mingle into the ultimate flame. Okay? Remember that, that smoke and flax he will not discard, but he'll blow on you and re just ignite you again, or that bruise heal, you know? Um, now, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. And he says it, the way he says it, he says, don't you know? You don't understand? Know you not that you are the temple of God? You don't know that, man? I'm paraphrasing here. Don't Get your act together. Don't you know? Amen. That you're the ark of God? Yeah. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? There's a question mark there. If, now listen to what he says. You're the ark. If any man defiles the temple, God him shall God destroy. Beware and watch your temple. Watch what you take in. Man, that's pretty much get right, get straight. Start studying. Amen. God can't set you. God can set you on fire. Amen. That's just, man. That's what it's about. The fire. You know, Jeremiah twenty verse nine. You know, Jeremiah twenty verse nine. What does it say? It says, "But His word was in my heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones." Yeah. What is the fire? People say, you know, send me the fire, send me the fire, send me the fire. You can't get the fire unless you have this. Right. That's right. That's right. Send me the fire, but I don't want to read. Send me the fire, I don't want to study. Send me the fire. Yeah, if I don't have this, guess what? Send me the fire. You're dead. Amen. Judgment. I'm sorry, I'm getting... I'm, <laughs> Man, I, <laughs> Father, you know it's burn inside of each and every one of us. Man, I was I was sitting down on my couch and man, the Lord was showing me this, and all of a sudden my wife is sitting down and I just pick up my notebook and I'm reading and reading and reading and reading. She looks at me like that. And I said, "Don't worry on me. I'm just preaching to you." You know? She said, "Look, I'm gonna take Braylon and I'm gonna get out your hair." I said, "The game in my hair." Now, when did? Oh, there. Here it is. When, now, when did you and I become the ark of God? John, can you turn that air on, please? When did us, you and me, you and I, I and you, become the ark of God? Oh, I didn't even pay no more. When did we become the ark of God? That's exciting. That's exciting. Did we become the ark? I'm going to ask you the question. Did we become the ark when Jesus Christ died and rose again? Did we become the ark? Did we become the ark when Jesus Christ died and rose again? Answer that question. No. Why? But, no. Because Jesus, when he rose again, he was still here for 40 days after. Right? Yeah. And the Bible tells you when you become the ark of God. Let's go to it. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Mm. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Uh... <sighs> 
Jay. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. You know what? Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Let's start at verse... Let's start at... Um, let's... Let's start at, let's start at uh, verse 3. To whom also... Verse 3. Acts 1 verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infathomable proof being sin, seen of them forty days in speaking of things pertaining the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ rose, then what? He walked on earth for forty days. So for forty days, what did he do? He spoke about the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what he did. Yes, okay? Right. Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, his disciples, they should not depart. Don't leave from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. But ye shall be, he says, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But you shall be had baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's it. Not many days hence. That's it. That's when it happened. After. Right. It hasn't happened yet. Come on. When they therefore were, when they therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, "Now watch this. This is crazy." He says, "Lord, would thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel?" Listen to what Jesus said. So the disciples asked him a question, and he says, "And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put." in his own power. That's kind of crazy. But wait. He says, but ye shall receive power. What is the power? The power is God. Right. So once you receive the power, you will know. Because God's going to bring us into what? The secret place, if you dwell in him and reveal things to you Deuteronomy 29 9 the secret things belong to him but whatever's revealed to you is what belongs to us I mean it's just over and over the glory of God is concealed the honor of kings the search out of matter becomes revealed I mean it's over and over that just more and more just ties it in you know what I'm saying that's a whole another different message but um yeah, that brings us back to his return and everything. Um, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and unto me in the uttermost parts of the world. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. Listen. Remember what the message was. Yeah. You remember what the message is? Who dwelleth between the cherubims? Right. Remember the fire? Remember? Yeah. There we go. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men in white stood by them in white and said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand gazing up? Don't you know he's going to return the same way he went up on the cloud? He's going to return? Those two men, I promise you, 
if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, yeah. those two angels is the same two angels that protect the tree of life from Genesis yeah. chapter 3, is the same two angels in Genesis chapter 18 that walked beside him when they came to Abraham, is the same two angels that seated behind him on the throne, is the same two angels that when he died on the cross, in the, when he died and was laid in the tombs, one at the head and one at the feet, is the same two angels when they watched him go up into heaven. Right. Amen. My God. Is the same two angels that when they left him, that went out and smote Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the same two. And those two, brother, Jesus, those two angels, is his judgment that goes out. Amen. Jesus walks and we see him in the light of the glory of God and we know that the glory of God is the face of Jesus Christ and we see him walking and I can picture him walking in the glory of him here but the two angels that are beside him When he gives the order, I don't want to be caught in that wrath. That wrath, when he gives that order, is unbelievable. And I can just see it over and over and over through the Word of God. And I wouldn't doubt that those two angels that he dwelleth between is the same two angels. And I'm just saying, I'm just talking here would be the same two angels that probably poured out the wrath upon Egypt. Because God, Jesus Christ, is the one that dwelleth between the cherubims. And everywhere I see, and the fire of God came out of him and, and, and went out toward the children of Israel. I've guaranteed it was them two angels that... It, went out and did it because whenever I look at it that's where it's coming from man my man it's that's amazing Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that's awesome when did we become the ark we're right there we're close guys when did we become the ark here it is and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were all the one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothes Cloven tongues like as a fire. What is fire? God. And God, which is fire, and it sat upon each of them. And I'm going to keep reading. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, which is God the Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues. And as the Spirit gave them utterance, and they were, were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation. Listen to that. Out of every nation under heaven. Remember the promise to Abraham, the nations. Yeah. Nations are going to come out of Abraham. That brings us back to Genesis 18, 17. The promise is where that comes from. That's when we became the ark of God. And he dwelled in us. I leave you with this, these words of Peter. Acts chapter 2, verse 32 and through 39. This Jesus has God raised up, 
Whereof we all are witnesses. We are all witnesses now. Amen. Of what took place because we all accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Watch what we do. We're all the ark of God. Begin to read and study and devour the word and become that flame of fire that God has called us to be so that we can go out to the outermost parts of this world. And when I'm talking about the outermost parts of this world, your neighbor is the outermost parts of this world. And be used wherever God. John, you definitely go to the outermost parts of this world. <laughs> you definitely, you know. And Carl, you know. So, man, God can use us in areas. And wait on Him. Don't kick a door open. Don't even push it open. If it's open, step into it. Yeah. 33, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and have received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath, he hath shed forth that which is, that he now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heaven, but he saith unto himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou in my right hand. If you read up above that what that is when you go back and you read about David God showed David what was going to come from his loin what was going to happen David seen it remember David held the keys and David knew what was coming from him that's why Jesus they call him the son of David you know what I'm talking about and David knew what was coming from his lineage the tribe of Judah they, he knew and so that's where that comes from. Until I make thy foes thy footstool, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom he have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, talking about the crowd, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren. This is what they tell, they, they tell Peter and the apostles. Men and brethren, what shall we do with all of this that you done told us? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be ye baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call and one more thing you are now since you ask Christ into your heart and live for Him, the fire of God lives and dwells within you. You are the temple. You are the ark that was, that was made by God's hands and not man's hands. Well, if that's the case, my God, my Savior, dwells between two cherubims. And the Bible says in Psalms 91.11 that He sends the angels charge over me and the, angel, the word charge means to watch over so I know with Christ living in me the fire of God lives in me I have cherubims on either side of me and guess what we're coming into right now the time of Pentecost and it's the fire of God yeah. Father we thank you for today we thank you for your message yes. Father I thank you for the way it come out yes. I thank you for bringing everything back to my memory Lord yes. Amen. Father it was a journey that you uh, brought me on Father I hope they received everything thank you, Lord. that um Amen. Father, all I could do is say thank you. Yes. And uh, Father, I just praise you for this. 
Father, I just gave a message, you know, and said, you know, what do we do with this? You know, for our mission ascends. And, but what's crazy is the ending of this message is the last words of what Peter said and when he was became the ark of God it was the beginning of his ministry and father you had me close with the beginning of Peter's ministry and father if this is the beginning father I accept it I accept it Lord in Jesus name Amen <laughs>